Please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get the regular updates of my channel and do not forget to like, comment and share. Hello everyone. Welcome back to SaaS with ServiceNow. This is ITSM implementation mock training. In this video, we will configure state choice behavior on incident form. We will update the state of incident automatically and make other fields mandatory as per the value of state. So our first task would be that state should become on hold with on hold reason as awaiting change when change is created from incident. So if you have incident and if you are creating a change from that incident, then state of that particular incident sh should automatically become on hold. And we have a field called on hold reason that should automatically be populated as awaiting change. So that's a first task. Second task is when state changes to on hold. I think it's kind of vice versa when state changes to on hold and on hold reason as awaiting change, then change request field should become mandatory. So these are the two tasks which are related to changing the behavior of the fields. That's the main task in this particular section. So let's go to the instance and try to change the behavior on the basis of different field choices. So we will go to our instance. In first task, we have to make these fields like state field should become on hold and on hold reason field should become as awaiting change when you create the change directly from the incident and that definitely should be an existing record of incident. So what I will do in that case, maybe I will open this module. So we will open list of open incidents. And for that, because you have to create the change from this incident. How do we do that? You right click on the header. You have this create normal change, standard change, create emergency change. So if you have an incident, I think we normally sometimes definitely create emergency change. So what I will do, I if I click on this button, it will first ask me for these uh, for these data like subcategory because these are mandatory fields. But that's fine. We don't have to fill this data right now because first we will do the changes so that we can set the value of these fields. So for that, I will quickly go to configure and I will go to UI actions because that's a UI action. And what I will do, I will search for that particular UI action, which is create emergency change. So maybe I will go to name and here I will select change and I do have this. So I will click on this create emergency change because I have to see this particular UI action and I have to make the changes in this UI action so that we can set the value of incident state. So if I come here, and we are fetching this data. We have change request right here. I think this is setting the value of uh, change request. And we have this set direction URL. Uh, but what about the value? We have target dot table, target dot society. Um, and I think target is this one. Um, uh, it is not updating any uh, value. So we have that current record and we have to update it. So what I will do, maybe I will do it here. So in that case, what I will do, I will mention here current dot and we have that field state. So we will make the field as current dot state. Now we have to find that value of on hold what exactly the backend value we have for on hold. So I will quickly go to another tab and I will select this state and I will click on configure dictionary. So for on hold, uh, we should have, let me check hold on hold is three. So here 
you can mention uh, current dot state and I can put here as three and I can put current dot and then we have on hold reason so I will go back because I need that field as well if I select this on hold it will automatically show me that as well yeah we got it and now I will click on configure dictionary because I have to check the name of the field as well it is on it is hold reason that's the name and choice awaiting changes five so what I will do I will do current dot hold reason equal to five and uh, that's it so we have changed these and one important thing we will do that we will do current dot update because we have to update this as well so I will just click on save so it is saved and now we will go to our incident any existing incident and we will try to create a change record from that particular incident we don't have this data so I will try to fill it I think uh, why it is still there because this is existing data so maybe this inquiry was already selected so I will select meeting room here I will select any configuration item for now so I will select this one I will select any assignment group maybe app engine admins and I will just save this once it is saved you can see state is still new and then I can just click here and if I click on this create emergency change if I click on this I will be routed to it is creating okay so change is created so you can see changes created successfully and if I click on my incident absolutely you can see state is automatically becoming on hold and we have this on hold reason as well as awaiting change so that's the change we have done as part of the first task now second task is that if you change this to state to on hold and you make the on hold reason as awaiting change then change request should become mandatory and you can see here we already have this change request populated here because you were trying to create and let me check if that was the same change 3001 yes absolutely it got automatically populated now what you can do so our ask is let me show you that as well because before making that change we have to see that how exactly it works so I will open this existing incident and let's say I make it as on hold and I make it as awaiting change is it becoming mandatory answer is no it is not so what I will do so we have to definitely uh, do something or perform some development and perform some configuration so that whenever user changes this state to on hold and on hold reason becomes awaiting change this should this field should become mandatory and for that what you can do you can use UI policy because we don't need to do any kind of scripting again so what I can do I can just go to configure and I will go to UI policy and here I will click on new because I have to create a new UI policy so I will go over here and then here I will mention mock dot set change request as mandatory you are done here I can mention state is on hold and on hold reason you have this one on hold reason is awaiting caller if we have this condition so I will save this so I'm done with UI policy creation now I will create UI policy action so we are checking this condition and then I will make our 
change request field as mandatory. So I will click on this and I will look for change request. We should definitely have that field. Yes, we have change request and I will make it true and I will click on submit. If I click on submit, our whole UI policy will be created and uh, let's just validate if we have any red icon. So we do not have any red icon. That means there is no conflict. So we are good to go. And now I will go to any open incident record. Let's say this one. And if I open this one and here change request is not mandatory. And if I change it to on hold and if I change it to awaiting change. OK, you can see it is it's still not doing this still not changing so if I select on hold and all hold reason is awaiting change and this is not becoming mandatory there should be some issue that's fine this definitely happens sometimes so we can definitely check that what exactly issue we have and this is called troubleshooting so that's totally fine it definitely can happen with you so if I check my UI policy because ideally it should be mandatory because we, we are doing the right thing. Uh, set change request and change is on hold and on hold reason is awaiting caller. Okay, that's a mistake we have done, guys. Here we have mentioned awaiting caller. It is awaiting change. I will save it now. This time I'm 100% sure that that would work. So let's go to open uh, incident and we will open this one and then we will change the state and on hold reason. So we will change this to on hold. We will select as awaiting change and that's it. You can see here change request is mandatory this time. Well, that's how you basically make uh, different, I would say, change the behavior of fields on the basis of values from different field. And that's the powerful feature we have in service now. And you can see we have not written any kind of code as well. Everything is configurable. So if you are pretty much new to the implementation, you will definitely get these kind of requirements and lot of requirements can be achieved without any single line of code. That means you don't have to write code. That means a lot of things you can achieve. And even ServiceNow now has Flow Designer, even for, uh, I would say, server-side scripting, server-side uh, logic, you can just use Flow Designer. But yeah, a lot of things sometimes you have to do on client as well, and you might need coding for that. But if even if, if I say about the simple, uh, configurations, simple requirements you want to achieve, you can just do it without writing a single line of code. So that's how you can change the behavior of fields on the basis of other fields in ServiceNow as part of the ITSM implementation. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share and comment and do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a great day.